Huawei Digital Nepal Country 2022 in association with Info Developers, connected by Ansel. We have both uh, Nepali as well as non-Nepali speaking audience, so I will try to mix uh, in between. I know Ken uh, doesn't understand much Nepali, and you probably wouldn't understand more Nepali as well. So we will try to uh, relate to that mix. Okay. I'm going to be talking about leadership and change and what it really requires. I want to take you back to 509 years, a book that was written by Machiavelli. It was called The Prince. Why is it always difficult for leaders to change? There are problems because nobody accepts the change. It's a very delicate process. It is very dangerous to conduct. And leaders in the introduction of change are always in a problem because the fear of adversaries. The adversaries are people, they say, you niyam milde nai, you kam gorna milde na. Niyam gorna milde na, niyam ma chai na, tabai na boli, fosdari mudda lakcha. So these are the things that are stopping people from making changes. When we cannot make change, we run into a lot of problems. Until we can prove that it is a trustworthy environment and we can succeed. It is only after that people will start making that change. You pants say no versagari makaveli le bane ko kura aile saman pani it holds true. One aspect of what I want to talk about today and hope make it very clear because this is an area where I feel a lot of people are very puzzled. They say IT equals digital. Now, after you walk out of the program, I don't want you to be saying that. IT does not equal to digital. IT strategy is a technical answer to a business question. And digital business strategy is a business answer to a technical question. Business ko problem, IT le solve kar sa. IT ko problem, digital le solve kar sa. This is very important going forward because if we don't think that, if we start saying IT equals digital, then we will run into more problems that was created by IT first. So I want to start from giving you an example from Microsoft. I think everybody knows about Microsoft. Before Nadella became the CEO of Microsoft, every department was holding a gun to the other department. Every department saying, that department doesn't know what we are talking about it. They were having task duplication. The grades were going down. Performance of the department was going down. He made a change in that organization. where every department started being friendly to every department. And the crux of the presentation today is how can we as a nation move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset? Because a lot of things that comes out when we speak to people is coming from a fixed mindset. Failure will limit my ability. If I fail, I will lose my job. Whereas the growth mindset is failure is opportunity to grow. Just the opposite. Failure is an opportunity to grow. Here, we have, when I'm frustrated, I give up. The growth mindset says, when I am helpless, challenges will help me to grow. So basically, these two diagrams, how are we going to move from a very fixed mindset to a growth-oriented mindset? where we start speaking about, I can try new things, versus, I stick to what I know. If we cannot move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, taking and embarking on a digital journey is going to be impossible. Because this is not IT, this is digital. So. In, when you have a fixed mindset, success, what means to you is you feel threatened by success of others. 
अरुले राम्रो गरे भने मरो नराम्रो हुन्छ है whereas in a growth mindset you will find lessons and inspiration how the other people become successful so this is the key slide ken you agree with this the future is already here it's just not evenly distributed so what i'm talking about now may not be in nepal but it is in india it may be in united arab emirates in dubai it may be in some other country the future is already there but it's not evenly distributed so digital economy we all talk about digital how economy has moved and how it's going further 15.5 now it's almost hit 17.9% of the world gdp 25% of the world's gdp by 2025 digital 25% of the world's stock in digital most important driver for innovation and competitiveness that's a whole new topic innovation does not come automatically and transformational jobs because this is what the end result the end goal of any program should be 1990 look at what it economy was then they didn't even talk about digital economy they said it was an it economy and then you had a physical economy moved to 2010 2010 you have then the it economy became a digital economy look at the size of physical economy it has grown and by 2040 look at the size of what digital economy is going to be and what the physical economy has to offer because this is kind of transformation that's what digital is providing to the rest of the world what will happen is what dr pallav cha said we will be providing we will be building public networks proprietary networks we need to build sorry private networks we need to have public connectivity we need to have public cloud public public identity management id for id analytics cybersecurity so that public anybody who wishes to participate in that infrastructure can work and then above all the entire program the goal would be to increase the gdp of the nation okay yeah? create more services that people will be using and with these two we will be creating more jobs for nepal creating digital workforce for nepal now creating all these things here and not being able to increase the gdp not being able to increase jobs and not being able to increase services is going to be meaningful it's not going to be meaningful so what is digital leadership the only leadership we understand in this country is political leadership we call it rajnitik netritva and i'm going to be talking about digital leadership what it is about why it's important building an innovative open accessible network and transparent so people are more free to use that and how do we create digital leadership and why is it important to create a digital leadership in banks we talk about risk appetite in digital we talk about digital courage new ways of working new ways of running operation new ways of engaging customers how are we going to engage customers it's only through one mobile one particular mobile that everyone uses around the world or one particular app new product and services new business models and new markets and what are the key differentiators for that i'm going to take one because i think that's the most important new ways of engaging customers for government citizens are their customers channel extension it's not only using one channel but using multiple channels interactivity how can a customer or a citizen interactively use the application and contextualization which is very poor because 
in most cases, when you see the apps that are coming out, they are particularly in a form that needs to be filled out for a government agency. Like Malepa, Sat number form, Kohanu Sat, Nagri Tako form, Kohanu Sat. So what does it really take for these nations to develop? And why are they number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five? It's not because they're rich. It's not their GDP is very high. And if you look at this, Ten countries listed here. And I'm going to show another slide, which is about tech savviness. Singapore, number one. And I asked a friend of mine, you know, we also run these services. We have similar services like yours in Ministry of Finance, in Ministry of Development, in Ministry of Health, in Ministry of Education. Why is it running so well in your country and not ours? And his reply was, because our minister uses that application. If there is something wrong, and if he finds something wrong, he uses, he calls us and tells us there is something wrong in the application. Java Saman, Hamaru Netrito Bargali applications are used by the Tava Saman, Ikura Aruma development now, they will take time. And that's very obvious and it's very clear. So Singapore is number one, result of strong government mandate. And government support is always very important when it comes to bringing about change. So some of the leaders here, we have one from US also. We have one from People Republic of China. I still haven't had one from Nepal here. Hopefully one of you are going to be leaders tomorrow and I'll be able to put your picture here. These leaders brought change. They didn't bring change by themselves. They got a whole people of them working for the change. To effect change requires organizing collective action, i.e. a movement towards change. So the key role of a digital leader is to have a movement for change. So this is where we start. I was talking to him, Palji. In any digital government, digital initiative, the first thing that comes is leadership. Unfortunately, we are having this class at the end, this session at the end, because I hope more people will be here to listen to what I have to say. User-centric design, very important. Public administration and change management, I talked about Machiavelli's approach. Capabilities, technology, data, cybersecurity, Legislation, sorry, cybersecurity, legislation and regulation, and digital ecosystem. If we don't have a leadership, it would be very difficult to achieve the challenges we have envisioned. So, what are the key activities in which one needs to engage in order to be successful digital leadership? There are four quadrants. Digital masters, digital connectors, digital operators, and digital dinosaurs. We want to be at this level of creating digital masters. But if we really think where we are heading in terms of organizations that are performing digitally, we are rock bottom. We are digital dinosaurs. They will be like that because the pace of innovation is not there. Five building blocks for the ones that are working in FinTech, I think this would make more sense. No country in the world has ever been successful without creating an operational backbone. Because this is a foundation architecture for digital. If you don't have your standardized systems, processes, to support Nathan's core services, you will not do very well. You have your digital platform. This is where your repository of business data comes. Your infrastructure comes in. Then, then only you have external developer platform. This is where the fintechs come in. Your external developer platform. You have then a core component is getting customer insights. And this is an area that is non-existent in Nepal. 
We never ask our customers what we need. We think we know everything that the customer wants to know. And fifth is the accountability framework. You know, I don't have much time, about four minutes now. I can talk for four hours in each of the subjects, but let me talk about the last one, accountability framework. So, in order for the change manager to happen, any country in the world, as Dr. Pallab Sa said, because we follow the same discipline, we need to create an operational backbone. If we do not have an operational backbone, our fintech model is going to be very disintegrated. Akasmani just onja. Yeh bada phone gariyo, utha bada kagaz dekhe, kagaz dekhe, kama rakhe, kama rakhe, rupathai. Second stage: shared customers insights. This comes in when you are trying to build a digital backbone. You then move into digital platform. You only move into digital platform after you complete these two. You have your accountability framework set, and then you develop an external development platform. This is how world-class organizations, world-class countries have been able to build their digital society, the digital nation. Dubai is a good example. Dubai is an example of how the entire city, the smart city concept, is run on blockchains. I've asked many friends who go and visit Dubai, but every time they forget to answer, ask this question. They have 27 services running on 27 decentralized ledger technology using blockchain. And they follow the same principle as how this is moved. So, what does accountability framework start from? It has component workers. It does not have project managers. We are still working in an area of project managers. I can see some of you right here whose title is project manager, and some of you who want to become project manager. You have to be component workers. Too. The mission should drive, not structures. Samiti, Upasamiti, Mahasamiti. That should not be the driving force. Task force, it should be the mission that should drive it. It should be followed by matrices, not by directives. They have to have accountability matrix on who is accountable for doing what. It needs to follow by experiments and not by major launches. Because every time you experiment, you learn something new. It has to be a continuous release, not scheduled release. Do you think Pachita Mile application just live in live governors? Sir, a KHD live on the Haina, Tosuna Mala Matsab China, Tamila, do you think Bitter just even live governors? No application developers can work that out. They will develop, release on a continuous basis. And it has to be fully resourced. Dr. Pallavsa also said, if you cannot fully resource your digital program, he says, it will be very difficult to run it. And finally, it is about collaboration. And it is not about hierarchy. It is not saying that I'm a senior project manager or I'm a junior project manager, or saying that me section officer. And it's about trust, and it's not about control. Because a lot of times when you're working with knowledge workers, especially in the digital port, in application two this has changed, but in digital it is about trust and not controls. So, these are some of the key questions that I keep thinking. How can Nepal commit to sustain a holistic transformation strategy? How can policymakers support innovation, experimentation? How do we integrate digital transformation? How should policymakers engage stakeholders to build coalition? And how do you scale up digital inclusion? And how do you balance between getting stuck from top-down and bottom-up approach initiatives? 
These are tough, tough questions for any policymaker to answer, especially for politicians to answer as well, because very, very recently there is a big book written by Kausik Basu, he's one of the very famous economists, and he was very clearly said that the art of political speech is to say things that sound meaningful, but are impossible to pin down. No one can say what you said is wrong, because no one can understand what he said. You hear such speeches from master politicians, not just in India, but anywhere around the world. So, last and not the least, I want to end this presentation, which was provided by the Minister of IT from Pakistan. I stole his slide. I haven't gotten his permission yet. You know. And this slide, I will explain to you in, uh, in Nepali, sorry, in Hindi. Mera azam itna buland hai ki paren sholo ka dar nahi. Mujhe khof aati se gul se hai, ye kahin chaman ko jala na de. Thank you very much. If you don't understand the meaning, you can always meet me after the session and I will explain it to you.